Now we get to the really fun part of the course, and that's cross-country planning. Because cross-country flying is the really fun part of flying. And when we start planning our cross-countries, that's when we start using the flight computer. Now, you're probably thinking, why do I need to learn to use a manual flight computer like this? Well, even though in real life you'll probably use an electronic device or an app to make calculations for a flight, you'll still want a manual flight computer with you in the cockpit because it's the perfect backup. It doesn't need electricity, doesn't need batteries, can be operated with one hand and will still work after you drop it or step on it. Plus, the designated examiners who give you your check ride will want to see that you're still able to make calculations in the event your electronic devices fail. And if you show up for that practical test with a computer-generated flight log and an electronic calculator or app, you're pretty much guaranteed that the examiner will fail your electronics and then ask you to do some calculations. But don't be buffaloed by the flight computer if you don't know how to use it yet because I'm going to show you how absolutely easy and simple it is to use that flight computer to figure out your time, your fuel, your distance, your wind, whatever it is that you need to know. And besides, another reason not to be buffaloed by that flight computer is it's just there to help you and everything you use that flight computer for can also be done with either pencil and paper or a calculator. So don't worry about that flight computer. It's a piece of cake to use and if on the test it begins to bother you, you can always revert to using a calculator or pencil and paper. Now on the front side of the flight computer, the circular slide rule side here, basically what you use that side for is to multiply and divide. It's basically a circular slide rule. So let's take a look at that front side and turn that flight computer so that the 60 on the outer scale is up towards the top. So here's our 60 on the outer scale. And notice, just to the right of the 60, it says distance. The miles are always going to be on the outside scale of that flight computer. Now, 60 on the outside scale can be miles, can also be your fuel or be your gallons. The 60 on the inside scale is going to be your time. 60 is the minutes. And if you look a little bit to the right on that inner dial, notice that the inner scale is labeled time. That's minutes. And the very far inner scale, by the way, is going to be hours. So hours are on the far inner scale, minutes on the inner scale, but your distance or gallons is always going to be on the outside scale. Now taking a look at the tens, where we have the 10 on top of the 10, one of the things you'll notice as you look around the scales here is that we do not have a one on the flight computer. So we have to use the tens to represent a lot of different things. That 10 on the outside scale could stand for 10, but it could also stand for one, or it could stand for 100, or it could stand for 1,000. It just depends on what scale of problem you're working. The 10 on the inside scale could be 10 minutes, but it could also be one minute, or it could be 100 minutes. So how many zeros you have after the 10, or if you have any zeros at all, depends on the kind of problem you're working. And that's where common sense will come into play as we work through on the flight computer. Now take a look around on the outside scale on the flight computer to the right. And what we're doing is we're looking for a two on the flight computer, but you won't find a two. What you do find is a 20. 
So the 20 on the outside scale of the flight computer could stand for 20 miles, but it could also be 2 miles, it could be 200 miles, it could be 2,000 miles. Again, it depends on the kind of problem that you're actually going to be working.